morning. Welcome to one and all present here. Hope you had a fun and insightful session in the morning. We kindly request our director, Dr. Adya Sharma, to welcome the gathering. Um, has our guest, Mr. Oswaldo, joined? Yes, ma'am. Oswaldo, are you here? I'm here. <laughs> okay, great. Do so. Can we hide? We, namaste. Nam, namaste. <laughs> we we yes. Now we can see. So is it okay if we start? Okay. Let me just uh, make sure. Yes, my camera is okay. Um. So, can I start? No, no. I will start. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so again, once again, Namaste Oswaldo and welcome to India and welcome to Symbiosis Center for Management Studies so virtually. Um, I'm so happy that you are here with us today and especially considering that it is 6 a.m. in your country, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And you are here with us. Thank you so much. This truly means a lot to us. Uh, let me just give you, though you know about Symbiosis, but let me still give you a little background. So Symbiosis was established in the year 1971 on the motto Vasudhev which means the world is one family. We are celebrating our 50 years now. And Symbiosis Center for Management Studies is a constituent of Symbiosis International University. We, uh, we conduct the BBA course and getting admission in our institute is through a very rigorous process. So the students have to appear for an all India entrance test, which is called SET or Symbiosis Entrance Test, in which thousands of students from all over the country uh, take part, they appear for that test. Based on the scores, they are selected a very small number for the next process, which we call PIWAC, or which means personal interaction and writing ability test. And then finally, a small number of students are selected to join SCM Pune or Symbiosis Center for Management Studies Pune. Um, India, as you know, is a land of diversity. We have diversity of religion, language, food, clothes, festivals, and we thrive in this diversity. At SCMS also, we try to provide diverse platforms to our students to learn, grow, and contribute. And one such platform is COIL for us, a collaborative one -night international learning. Um, you are an expert on it. We just started with it around two years back, but we are maybe one of the very few institutes in our country which is doing COIL. And I'm super excited about this fact that this batch of students will be working with the students from Brazil. There's so much to learn and I'm 100% sure that this relationship has a great future. On that note, Oswaldo, thank you so much for joining us at 6 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. in India. Welcome once again to India and welcome once again to SCMS. Thank you. Namaste once more. <laughs> um, I would like to um, thank um, everyone who is supporting this presentation. You know, it's always a pleasure to have a chance of um, sharing uh, the little we know about um, uh, virtual exchange or COIL. And um, I would like to thank, uh, a special thank to Dr. I'm, I'm pr probably gonna mispronounce all the names and I apologize. Um, Dr. Um, Ashtosh Matu, Dr. Adia, um, Professors Vijay, uh, Ni, um, Niha uh, Joan, Panakal, uh, Shreya Virani. And um, something that really called my attention here, this is the first time I have a uh, international presentation and I do this on a almost everyday basis. Um, I've presented um, 
you know, I've given talks to over 15 countries. And this is the first time that students took initiative of um, um, befriending me on um, LinkedIn. And um, I, I really would like to give my special good morning to, um, I'm probably going to pronounce the name, to uh, Sanka, Sankahaniu Patra. Uh, I had two other people befriending me too, but I didn't ask them for permission, so I won't mention their names. So um, this um, shows how um, proactive Indian students are and how proactive um, uh, symbiosis students uh, think of their future. Um, this is really interesting situation. Uh, I haven't even given my speech, but they are already uh, considering that, that that might be something interesting for them. And uh, they are considering networking, they're considering the ideas of uh, what they can do in the future. So this is, this is uh, something amazing that has never happened to me before. So um, I'd like to share my screen with you. Let me see here. Uh, okay. Uh, Dr. Oswaldo, uh, can yes. I have a minute, please? Before you sure. start, we would love to introduce you to our audience, which are newly joined batch of- Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so for one minute, will you please excuse us? Sure. Thank you, thank you. Over to you, Rishi and Anushka. Thank you, ma'am, and thank you, sir. Anushka, go ahead. To address the new batch of students at SCMS Pune, we are extremely honored to have among us today Oswaldo Suchi Jr., PhD, serving as Virtual Exchange Coordinator for Centro Paulo Sousa in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and has been a teacher trainer for the past 30 years. He worked as a Human Resources Training Specialist and as a Business Course Designer. In 2014, his team received the Santander Bangia du Estudant Award as the best academic partnership for a COIL virtual exchange collaboration developed with State University of New York at Ulster. This award-winning collaboration is in its 16th consecutive edition. He was the first international professor to be awarded the Lena Visiting Professorship from St. Bonaventure University in 2015. Without further ado, we request Mr. Oswaldo Suchi Jr. to address the student. Thank you. Are you able to present? You... Uh, yes. Let me see here. Where is my OK here? And share. OK. I assume you are seeing my screen now. Yes, sir. Correct? OK. Yeah, OK, so uh, let me this and this and this is I think this is okay so um as I mentioned um these people were very valuable in helping me um prepare for this presentation um the title of my presentation is the importance of internationalization in edu educational um in education sector um I, I am the virtual exchange coordinator. Um, I'll explain it later. Um, I work for Centro Paula Souza. We are a group of um, um, uh, tuition free um, state um, institution, which houses 270, no, I'm sorry, 253 technical high schools and um, 74. Um, uh, technical colleges. Uh, I'm responsible for the uh, this virtual exchange or COIL projects in the higher education. Um, and um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Brazil first before I enter the topic. You know, um, when we talk br about Brazil or when um, somebody thinks about Brazil, I think one of the first things that comes to mind is um, uh, soccer. And um, um, we've been very successful in terms of uh, uh, world, world tournaments. Uh, I think we're the only country who has won five times. We've participated of all editions. And soccer is very controversial here. This is the kind of subject that we don't talk. Um, we try to avoid it because everybody is very uh, passionate about it. Um, we also, uh, very famous for our um, carnival, 
Um, this is a typical um, carnival from uh, Rio de Janeiro. And each state has different ways of celebrating carnival. This is like a typical parade. Um, this is a special street that they um, they uh, have for um, especially for carnival. And um, people parade and dance and, and, and cheer for their what we call samba schools. Um, another thing that we're very famous for, we have some, uh, um, you know, very beautiful beaches. And I'm sure that India has a lot of them too. Um, some people come here for, um, for um, you know, enjoying the, the, the nice weather. It's very rarely the temperature is below 10 degrees uh, centigrade, it normally very hot. Uh, people are very um, hospitable. I was just watching the, the previous presentation and um, uh, I'm sure that if you, uh, I'm, I've never walked uh, that much, but if, um, if you walk through Brazil, you're probably gonna find a lot of nice and helpful people. But um, before I move into the next topic, I would like to uh, actually, before I start talking about internationalization, I would like to, uh, I would like to talk about something um, in Brazil that is, uh, I would call it like a grayish area. It's very difficult to say whether it's black or white. And I just would like to make sure that you have, um, uh, you can hear the sound of it. Uh, please let me know if you can hear the sound. So we uh, we do not uh, we are not receiving the audio, sir. We cannot hear the video. We can see the video, but we cannot hear. Okay. Can you hear the sound? No. No. Um, how can I make sure that you hear the sound? So. Uh... In the sharing, uh, is the audio share also on? One minute. Um, let me see if there are uh, advanced sharing. Uh, In the share, you have to click on share audio also, if I'm not mistaken. Sir, can you uh, see the status bar on the top of your screen? If you hover your cursor over your screen, on the top, you'll see a status bar. It'll have some options like share sound, share audio. You'll have to click on that. Hover on the top of my screen? Yes, sir. You'll find a status bar. Would we like share with sound, you know, sir? Would we just click share with sound? Share. Share with sound. Um, yeah, I don't see that option here. Uh, okay. Um, let's try something different here. Uh, I'll stop sharing and I'll share it one more time. Uh, okay. Share sound. Okay. I think now you can. Okay.
Um, well, this is capoeira, okay? So, um, and this is what we call a circle, a capoeira circle. This is um, difficult to define. Uh, and um, when um, we talk about Brazilian culture, this is, I think this is very representative of Brazilian culture. And this is very representative of cultural culture in general, because capoeira here, um, in Portuguese, we, we would say uh, what these guys are doing, it would be considered play there. Uh, uh, so they would invite people and say, let's play capoeira. Um, it's a dance, um, so there is rhythm. So if you, if you dance uh, off beat, you're not uh, playing capoeira. Um, some people would say that this is a disguised martial art because this was the way that slaves learned to defend themselves. Um, so they brought this, um, this tradition from Africa to Brazil and it evolved uh, a lot here in Brazil. Some people would say that it's a way of self-defense. Um, some people would say that it's um, cultural heritage. Some people would say that's a form of resistance because it was forbidden for a long time uh, in Brazil. And um, around the 1930s, somebody, uh, uh, actually a group of capoeira fighters or capoeira dancers, if you want, um, transformed it into a, um, into a like established, uh, established uh, uh, form of culture. And, um, you know, it was very famous in Hollywood for a very short time. So it was one of those Hollywood fads. And um, some people would say that's an unfortunate appropriation of um, Afro-Brazilian Afro culture. Um, in my personal opinion, this is a typical Brazilian, uh, a typical example of Brazilian syncretism, of amalg amalgamation here things uh, come from different cultures and they get mixed and it becomes something new. And this is something that um, um, I'm very proud in terms of Brazilian culture. Um, I myself, um, um, most of my family is Italian, but we have Portuguese, uh, we have uh, native Brazilians. My wife is uh, half Japanese, half um, Spanish with uh, some uh, native Brazilian blood, some Portuguese blood. So um, we, uh, we all come and create, um, we all come together in the culture and create different things. And talking about this, um, I think there are some um, things in the world going around that are very important for us in terms of internationalization. For example, around 2001, um, some people started noticing um, uh, emerging economies such as the BRICS. So Brazil, Russia, India, China, and more uh, recently, South Africa. And they started noticing that there are very similar um, things going on in these countries. Um, Along with this, um, more recently, um, people have been talking about South-South cooperation. So somehow um, um, uh, the, the uh, United Nations def defined this South-South cooperation as a sort of a framework uh, for collaborating among countries of the, uh, of the uh, South. And this collaboration should be in terms of uh, political, economic, social, cultural, environmental, and technical domains. And what I like most about this idea of South-South collaboration is that it's a manifestation of solidarity, as uh, we saw in the previous presentation. Um, even though um, uh, this person was walking around uh, India, uh, she felt uh, uh, she felt a network of people trying to help them, and I think this is this is the nature of uh, uh, this South South collaboration. Um, now moving on to internationalization in higher education, um, 
there are many aspects when you talk about uh, interna internationalization. Uh, the first and foremost, and that people are uh, most uh, used with is physical mobility. So it would imply um, uh, a symbiosis student coming to Brazil or a Brazilian student, a FATEC student going to India. So uh, this kind of physical mobility has been around and this is what normally people consider um, uh, traditional internationalization. Nowadays, we're talking also about virtual mobility. Virtual mobility has to do with the fact that um, if uh, my school has an agreement with your school, uh, I can take a class there, um, you know, a remote class or a distance education class, and the credits I, I, I get from this class can be used into my um, own, own course of work. So uh, virtual mobility could be attending class there without being there. Um, we have also uh, nowadays, uh, especially with this pandemic situation, we've seen a lot of uh, virtual events uh, like uh, webinars, conference competitions, or um, events like today. Uh, my, my area of expertise is in one of these, uh, it's in a different area in internationalization. Um, I work with virtual exchange or COIL collaborative online international learning, which is uh, a situation where two uh, professors come together, um, plan um, a, a series of tasks or, or plan a project and, uh, uh, and students develop this project. And um, uh, we, have, um, uh, we have a project as uh, Dr. Adia mentioned, we, we have two projects going on. Um, we have one project with uh, Professor Shriya uh, in the finance area, and we have um, a project with uh, Professor uh, Niha in terms of job satisfaction and people management. The professors uh, uh, from India and Brazil will prepare a plan for their students and they will develop together. This, this coming together to solve problems uh, is what makes um, virtual exchange very interesting. Uh, as we do this, we're considering two important aspects, internationalization at home. There is, a, it's impossible for everyone to travel abroad. It's very expensive. Um, it's uh, um, difficult. There's, um, you know, we have to uh, consider um, the carbon footprint. Uh, so internationalization at home, it's a mean, uh, is, is a way of bringing this international aspect into our everyday lives. And at the same time with um, this internationalization process comes the idea of global citizenship. More and more people want to help. More and more people want to find complex solutions to local and to global pro, uh, problems. I, I, I'm not helping anyone if I'm solving only Brazil's problems. Um, now I'm gonna move into some uh, technical details, but um, this is gonna be very brief. Um, uh, most of the ideas that I'm showing here come from the WIT 2020, the references at the end of my presentation. And um, the WIT says that the, um, as I mentioned before, um, they were um, this uh, physical mobility always emphasized the idea of exchange and cooperation. Um, I was invited to give this this uh, presentation, and and I'm here, so I I just want to cooperate. I'm I'm an educator, and um, this is this is I, I do this for for um, pleasure for. Uh, for I think it's my duty to humanity to share uh, the little I know. So um, this, uh, this is like a old school, but um, the wit says that there's been a lot of changes in higher education. Um, there's uh, massification now. Um, there is, uh, uh, we're talking about a global knowledge economy. So uh, 
you don't have to, you, you don't only need to know how to do things, but you need to know why you're doing things. Um, and something that is rather recent, uh, schools are recruiting. Um, they have reputation in research and rankings. And this has changed a lot. The, uh, the, the, the paradigms that we have for, for um, internationalization. And Wendy uh, says that this, uh, there, this has changed, has shifted the paradigm from cooperation to competition. Uh, the, uh, the wit also um, mentions that, um, uh, as I mentioned, uh, this physical mobility is, um, is still uh, uh, present and is still in the back of everybody's mind. We need to consider different uh, uh, styles, different uh, modes for internationalization. And one of them is this, uh, uh, this uh, internationalization at home, or as it is, he mentions here, curriculum at home. So our curriculums, curricula uh, have to consider this internationalization process. Um, and some of the reasons for this is because, um, uh, you know, physical mobility is, is, as I mentioned, is very difficult. It's uh, uh, financially challenging. Um, they, 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 they say that it's probably 2% of the students in the world uh, have a chance of, of traveling. In my institution, this is probably 0.1% of our students. So uh, this 2% is probably from um, the Northern Hemisphere uh, countries. You know, uh, here in the South, uh, at least here in Brazil, uh, very few people have this opportunity. Um, so um, becoming international is, is a, a new challenge. And as I mentioned, uh, we, I think we're eager to solve some of these global problems as we were doing with the COVID pandemics, with pollution, with um, uh, all sorts of uh, uh, deforestation, all sorts of problems. Um, and we have a, a specific guideline that I strongly recommend that if you've never heard of it, uh, to take a look at the United Nations. The United Nations has um, sustainable development goals. This has been like a guideline for us to consider um, global problems and how to act locally on these global problems. Um, uh, DeWitt believes that uh, we are very far from um, inclusive and um, he mentions two very important things. Uh, internationalization has to be intentional. Um, it means um, we have to plan it and we have to have a purpose for, for it. And it has to be inclus inclusive. Um, nobody should be left out of this um, um, internationalization process. And um, comes the, the question of what is important now? So what is that we need now? Um, uh, we have to change uh, uh, our ways of thinking about internationalization. We cannot mimic what's going on in Europe and in um, the United States. I'm not saying that they're wrong. You know, it's not, it's not like a, a, this kind of stupid criticism. It's just that uh, somebody's model is, or, or some other country's model is not... Uh, uh, adequate for us. We have to find uh, what's good. And, uh, and I'm not even saying that the Brazilian model is good for India. We, each country, each school has to find uh, its specific model. Some of the ways that people were talking about this is to um, decolonize curriculum. Um, I like the idea of um, tropicalizing our approaches. Um, uh, at the end of the presentation, I have a reference to, to a speech I gave about um, this topic. It's in Portuguese, but it has um, subtitles in English. So we have to find ways of doing things uh, that are good for our international partners, but at the same time, uh, at the same time are good for, for Brazilians. Um, uh, 
uh, as I mentioned before, we have to strengthen this South, South cooperation. We have to work uh, with the BRICS block. And um, uh, I think the most important thing here is that you as uh, a student, and especially uh, uh, the, the students who are just starting their um, academic careers, they have to take an active uh, participation in internationalization opportunities. Don't miss a single opportunity. You know, uh, whatever your school offers, is it a um, is a, we a webinar, a chance to receive a foreign uh, exchange student, whatever chance you have, don't miss it. Uh, internationalization is is like a, an everyday practice that you have um, uh, to. To, to really practice. Um, and just to, to close my, uh, my, um, my thoughts here, I would like to um, show you uh, two, two groups of perspectives that I would like you to, to consider. And uh, I think these are important for students uh, in terms of uh, internationalization. Um, one, which is the uh, professional perspective. Networking is, um, uh, you know, it, it's it's your future, it's your career, it's what's gonna um, help you in case you fall, uh, and it's what's going to help you uh, in case there is a, a, an interesting opportunity. So um, a local network is excellent. Um, a an international network is superb. Um, I know that this is this is strange to say, but I'm more famous. Uh, internationally than I'm in my own country. Um, so I, uh, it, it's something that I don't know why, but it's, it's, um, it's the network that you create. Uh, networking um, gives you uh, more professional opportunities, give you um, a chance of operating in multicultural, multilingual environments. I know that in India, you are used to this multicultural, multilingual environments, but when you're interacting with people, um, peoples from different cultures, uh, this is not true. For example, here in Brazil, you can go from north to south. Um, Brazil is, I think, three times larger than India, and we speak Portuguese from, uh, from south to north. Uh, there are 250 um, native Brazilian languages, but they're, it, these are very small groups. So uh, to a certain extent is a monocultural, uh, a, a monolinguistic uh, country. And in this sense, you have to learn how to interact with people. So uh, this is again, uh, something that has to go on uh, all the time. And, um, I do believe in multicultural, multilingual um, teams, uh, different uh, models operandi, different ways of working, always produce better results. And um, last but not least, in terms of personal perspective, I think um, internationalization uh, gives, brings you a sense of belonging that goes beyond borders. Um, I'm sure that uh, I see here, there are 346 people participating in this presentation at this moment. I'm sure that someone among you are um, as much of a fan as, as I am of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. So um, uh, somebody out there uh, shares your taste for food, your taste for music, your taste for dance. Uh, so it gives you this sense of belonging, belonging in the world um, and not, not only in Brazil or not only in India anymore. Um, I'm very proud of my unusual friends. Um, every time um, my friends are visiting me here in Brazil, um, something different happens. Um, it's either the food or the way they dress. And I'm very proud of having very unusual friends. They um, keep me focused. They keep me um, aware and they make me very happy because I'm a better person 
uh, looking at this uh, different ways of uh, facing life. Um, I, I'm not your typical tourist. I've traveled rather extensively, um, but I hate staying in hotels. I hate, uh, um, uh, you know, guided tours. I love a local, uh, a local, um, uh, a local uh, tour guide. Uh, it's always better to know the country with somebody who's local. And if you have this international network, this is much easier to do. And um, uh, last but not least, um, when you are in contact uh, with uh, foreign uh, or um, a different culture, you start to reflect on your own culture and your values. And um, this makes uh, I, I feel it makes me a much better person. I start to uh, think, uh, to cri critically think about my own life. And uh, these are the references. Um, uh, I strongly recommend uh, Hans de Witt. He's probably one of the most uh, famous uh, um, authors in terms of internationalization. And um, I also um, leave the, the link to a presentation that um, I've given about internationalization at home. And um, this is what I have to say. And if I have time, I'm open to questions. Thank you, sir, for your inspiring session. Um, we have a lot of questions from our audience, but due to time constraints, we'll be addressing two of them. Uh, the first question is, uh, Exposure to a different culture can be sometimes overwhelming. What would you suggest students can do to make themselves open to different cultures and perspectives while working together? Oh, this is, this is a great question. Um, um, one of the things that's really interesting, you know, um, um, for example, from, from my Brazilian perspective, uh, when I look at or when I'm interacting with um, our Indian partners, for example, uh, the way that you move your head, uh, this is very different for me. And in the very beginning, it was very confusing because in Brazil, uh, this is yes and this is no, and that's it. Um, we have a lot of hand gestures. You, you might have noticed that. Um, I'm always moving my hands. So uh, we do like this, we do like this. So we, we have a different of hand gestures. Um, basically, uh, trying to answer your question, what I, uh, I think we have to um, first ask the person to slow down, uh, especially in terms, if you're talking to a non-native speaker, slow down, give the person time to uh, get adjusted to your accent and vice versa, and uh, try to focus on whatever is in front of you. Um, uh, don't get distracted with clothes and uh, things that the person is doing, and try to focus on what's important for the person at that moment. So um, if you're talking food, focus on the food. Uh, if you're talking about the, the scenery, focus on... Uh, the question is try to focus on whatever is at hand, whatever is in front of you, because otherwise, I agree, you get overwhelmed with the colors, the scents, the, 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 the sounds. So um, uh, focus on the person and try to notice what is really important for that moment. Uh, is it uh, is the person is hungry? So let's feed the person. The person is uh, bothered with uh, the, sound, the, the, the noise. Let's try to uh, quiet down the place. So these kind of things are very important. So focusing on whatever is uh, important at that moment. Thank you, sir. I'm sure this will help the students a lot. Uh, sir, the audience also wants to know how can we make programs like COIL more easily accessible to everyone? Oh, this is this is an excellent question. Um, um, what we're doing right now is uh, uh, approaching uh, symbiosis. We're trying to uh, show uh, as many uh, programs as possible 
and trying to uh, at this first stage is is more of a professor to professor thing. So we're trying to locate people who are interested um, in working with us. And and uh, clearly, oh, we're not the only uh, players around the world. There's there are many um, institutions that are available. But um, I think um, students have an important role in, as I mentioned before, in trying to integrate internationalization into their lives. Um, professors have um, a lot of things to do. Uh, uh, sometimes we have to uh, grade tests, we have to prepare. We, uh, I, I'm sure that uh, professors want to give their best to students, but sometimes internationalization um, is not in the top of our list simply because there are too many things to be done. So um, I think students can help um, um, remind uh, professors of how important it is to know what's going on in Brazil, uh, interacting with uh, international partners, um, you know, um, in any place around the world is an excellent experience. And this, um, I think, uh, from, from a student's perspective, is to constantly remind people around you of how much you want to be international. Thank you, sir, for that insightful session. Uh, we would kindly request you to stay on call with us for the investiture ceremony of our placement, sir. Sure. A key objective of imparting knowledge for this program is to groom students to take up the challenges of the professional environment. With year-round soft skills in personality development training, internships, and industry exposure, SMS ensures that the students enhance their skills and shape up to be responsible citizens of the world. We have a well-established placement cell to bridge the gap between the stringent competition in the industry and the talent available in the college. They along with the other student bodies, work to uphold the name of the Institute. This year, we have a team of diligent individuals who have been selected for this prestigious position. May we now have the placement cell on the platform, please? Vanshika Agrawal, Functional Head. Akshita Chaudhary, Functional Head. Soumya Agrawal, Head, Documentation and Analysis. Nikhil Chhabra, Head, Industry Visits and Events. Ojis Joshi, Head, Skill Development and Training. Chitinj Agarwal, Head, Internship and Career Development Cell, and the Placement Coordinators, Anushri Mohanty, Kostup Chauhan, Vardhan Mathur, Mr. Trivedi, Simit Chaudhary, Radhika Goel, and Asta Jain. We would like to request Dr. Ashutosh Mathur to kindly administer the oath. Thank you, Rishi. Uh uh, students, uh, let's begin with the oath ceremony, okay? I, Akshita Chaudhary, Vanshika Agarwal, Amya Agarwal, Ojus Joshi, Shiddhaj Agarwal, Nikhil Chabda, Asta Jain, Anushri Mohanty, Kostup Chauhan, Nisar Trivedi, Radhika Goel, Simit Chaudhary, and Vardhan Mathur. Ashutosh, sir, please continue. Yeah, there's some internet connection or something. Yeah, yeah, something, sir. Sorry. Okay, so test these two. Yeah, uh, Postup Chavan. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's all over. Vardhan Mathur. Yes, sir. Okay, do solemnly pledge. Do solemnly pledge. That I will. That uh, I will. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Execute the duties. Execute the duties of the placement cell of the placement cell and will live up and will live up to the trust placed in me to the trust placed in me by my college by my college faculty faculty administration administration and fellow students and fellow students in promoting the welfare of in promoting the welfare of 
सिम्बायोसिस सेंटर फॉर मैनेजमेंट स्टडीज पुणे सिम्बायोसिस सेंटर फॉर मैनेजमेंट स्टडीज पुणे कंग्रेचुलेशन स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द न्यू प्लेसमेंट सेल फॉर द ईयर 2122 माय बेस्ट विशेस टू यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर thank you sir and congratulations to the newly appointed members of the placement cell this brings us to the end of the investigation ceremony request professor sonika rotella to present the vote of thanks thank you very much rashi i hope i'm audible yes ma'am yeah good evening one and all and a very good morning to dr oswaldo uh, on behalf of our director and the entire symbiosis family my heartfelt thanks for enriching all of us including our new incoming batch with your thoughts on the importance of internationalization in the education sector i'm sure and i'm really very sure that all of us and all our student who attended your session really enjoyed your presentation the presentation actually provided us with a great insight on the topic we we have a glimpse of brazilian culture and that was great we appreciate uh, you making time in your busy schedule and especially early morning to speak to our students these young minds and thank you once again for your time for your effort have a good day thank you sir Thank you 